HCI stands for Human Computer Interaction. According to Wikipedia, HCI involves the study, planning, and design of the interaction between people and computers. Some examples of HCI technologies include the computer, mouse and keyboard, touchscreens, and the Xbox Connect. Why do we study HCI? HCI is an important study because developers want people to use their products with ease. So what makes HCI useful? Myers, Hudson, and Posh have identified five themes and determined which HCI tools are useful. The first theme is parts of user interface that are addressed, which means useful aspects of user interfaces are included in the tool. The second theme, threshold and ceiling, describes how hard it is to learn to use the system, referred to as the threshold and how much can be done with the system, which is the ceiling. The third theme is called past of least resistance, in which successful tools allow people to use the least amount of effort possible when interacting with the system. Fourthly, predictability is also important in determining what is successful. The tools must not be unpredictable. And lastly is the theme, moving targets. It explains how important it is for the development of tools to keep up with the development of new technology so that the tools will not become obsolete. The evolution of human-computer interaction has without a doubt had a major impact on our society today. For the past decade or so, we have seen a major shift in technology that has become more user-friendly and more effective. Let's see how HCI has evolved throughout the years. Part of HCI is about studying and understanding technology that people will find effective to use. Technology is always adapting to fit our needs so we accomplish our tasks much more successfully. Over the years, HCI has emerged as a focal point for both computer science research and for behavior science. Since HCI is mostly human-centered information system, it is important to understand how people behave in order to create technology that will benefit everybody. HCI answers many questions, including how HCI can help many of the user's needs and make technology easier to use. Before the 1960s, the idea of user interface was unarticulated. Before the 1970s, a behavior approach to programming and the use of interactive systems developed rather rapidly to address the human side of technology and how people interact with computers. In the 1980s, standardized formats for text, images, and synthetic speech became more popular for personal computers. In the 1990s, HCI research became more integrated in computer science. Here is an example of the evolution of technology to help people use the computer easier. From room-sized computers weighing tons to medium-sized towers weighing just over 50 pounds to the 10-pound lightweight desktops we use today, human-computer interaction has increased portability and convenience without sacrificing functionality. The size and mass of these units has been cut down considerably, but the usability has not. We can see how technology has evolved to help us use the computer. Video games have also evolved throughout the years. From the 16-bit games to video games that recognize our movement, HCI research has definitely changed how we play games. Besides the Xbox Connect, what kinds of technology will we see in the future that will recognize our movements? What is assistive technology? An assistive technology device is any item, piece of equipment, or product that is used to increase, maintain, or improve functional capabilities of individuals with disabilities. Some examples of assistive technology devices include reading, mobility, vision, computer access, hearing, and written. On August 7, 1998, Section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act was signed into law. This act required all electronic and information technologies that are developed and used by any federal government agency to be accessible to people with disabilities. These technologies included websites, video and audio materials, electronic books, televised programs, and any other type of electronic media. Some may ask why assistive technology. Well, it promotes self-esteem, improves the quality of life, increases productivity, enhances performance, and increases independence. When designing human-computer interaction, human values are taken in consideration. These include ease of use, quality, adaptability, performance, and affection. Research done by Shinohara indicates that there is a social stigma that revolves around people with disabilities who use assistive technology, which is that they are seen as incapable and helpless. The participants in the research indicated that they wanted to be avoided being marked disabled and do not want to be socially stigmatized as being less capable, but rather want to show how assistive devices made them independent and capable. Although participants valued technology because it allowed them to do things just like everyone else, there was a value conflict. Assistive technology created a social barrier because of the stigma associated to them. In conclusion, Shinohara states that we must design for social acceptance, an approach considering not only functionality and usability, but perception, misperception, stigma, effects, and aesthetics to maximize a device's social acceptability. If the assistive technology creates social misperceptions of disability, then it is going against VSD by disabling usability and affection towards it. It is affecting human welfare, creating bias against people with disabilities, and affecting universal usability. We must design fashionable yet usable interfaces. When user interface is designed poorly, a major disaster such as the Three Mile Island incident can occur. The Three Mile Island accident was a partial nuclear meltdown which occurred at the Three Mile Island power plant in 1979. 
The accident was caused when coolant escaped the nuclear reactor because a valve was stuck in the open position, resulting in a partial meltdown and the release of a radioactive gas. So the question is, why didn't they just close the valve manually? Critical human factors and user interface engineering problems were revealed in the investigation of the reactor control system's user interface. The design of the valve indicator light was fundamentally flawed. PS implied the valve was shut when it went dark. When everything was operating correctly, this was true, and the operators became happy to aid to rely on it. However, when things went wrong and the main relief valve stuck open, the unlighted lamp was actually misleading the operators by implying that the valve was shut. Someone who designed the control panel programmed the light to go off once the computer has sent the signal to close the valve, which isn't the same as when the valve was actually closed. The operators had not been trained to understand the ambiguous nature of the valve indicator and look for alternative confirmation that the main relief valve was closed. The design should really be based on users and the interaction between computers and humans. The subfield of assistive technologies is rapidly growing, providing ways that are more creative for people with physical or mental challenges to interact and be productive when using their computing devices. Ranging from the Windows magnifier to more advanced text-to-voice and voice-to-text applications, these innovations make everyday life easier for those with mental or physical challenges. A properly designed user interface can be both easy to use and still provide the necessary power to help the user be productive in his or her task. A poorly designed interface, on the other hand, can inhibit the user's ability to perform his or her task, whether it is a minor problem or a devastating one such as a Three Mile Island incident. We can see how important the design process is for the technology we use every day. From the mouse to touch screens and connects, the ways in which we interact with computers has changed greatly since the computer's infancy and continue to change. While it is impossible to predict what exactly the next innovation in this rapidly changing field will be, we can see that products rely more and more on the human body to provide direct input to computers, making computerized tasks easier.